Hey everybody, it's Chris from Xano, and today we're going to talk all about secure file storage. We're going to cover storing your files securely inside of your Xano database. We're going to go over how to actually access those files after storage. We'll talk about how to delete those files on a regular cadence. And finally, we will talk a little bit about whether or not this is the right solution for you. So the first thing I'm going to show you is my database. I have a user table, just very basic information in here. And then I have a files table. This is where all of our secure files are being stored. We have encoded file, which is the actual contents of the file itself. We have a table reference to our users table that defines who this file was uploaded by. We have an array of table references to define who has access to this file. And then we have the file name, when the file should expire and whether or not multiple downloads are allowed. And to actually upload these files to our database, we're gonna take a look at our first API, which is upload a secure file. So when a secure file is uploaded, we have some inputs that take in the file itself, when the file should expire, who is allowed to access the file, and whether or not multiple downloads are allowed. In the function stack itself, it's pretty simple. We're just getting that raw file data. We're creating a variable that has an array of those users that are allowed access to the file. We're then creating a variable which has our file data, but it is base64 encoded. And this is kind of the magic that allows this to work is because we are storing this data in a text field in our database instead of using the classic file uploader. This enables us to do things like expire the file after a certain period of time, or only allows a certain amount of downloads before this file is unavailable. And then finally, we just add that record to our files table. And that's the whole thing. So I'm going to show you what this looks like. So let's head over to our example front end. And here we are on our upload a file screen. So let me choose a file. I can choose when I want the file to expire. And I can choose which users are actually able to access this file. And I can choose whether or not I want multiple downloads to be allowed. And this directly maps to the inputs of our upload a secure file endpoint. So let's go ahead and submit. Now, because this is just an example, nothing really happens on the front end side, but we can go back to our database and we can see we have that base64 encoded file and all of the additional data that we need. So now that we've talked about uploading secure files, we obviously want to talk about how these files can actually be accessed. So we'll go back to our API and we are going to take a look at this, get a secure file endpoint. So the way that this works is we have one input, which is just the ID of the file. So that is right now for this file that we just uploaded, this would be an ID of one. In the function stack, we get the record from the files table, and then we need to store the ID of the authenticated user in a variable, this endpoint does require authentication. And this is so we can determine who uploaded the file and who has access to the file. We're then using a precondition. Now a precondition is a function that allows you to check if a condition is true. If it is, the rest of the function stack will continue to execute as normal. But if it isn't, we can return a, a custom error message. Our expression is checking that allow access field in the record that's being returned and it's looking to see if that authorized user exists in that array. If we do, then we can continue. But if we don't, then we are returned a message that says you are not authorized to download this file. So assuming that precondition passes the check that we are authorized to download this file, we then take that base64 encoded file and we decode it. We use the base64 decode filter to get the actual contents of the file. And then we need to set a couple of headers. Now this is where things get a little bit interesting. So we can use this set header function to basically tell whatever is receiving this API, hey, we're about to give you just a raw file. We're not giving you a JSON object. No other type of data is being sent. This is just raw file data. And that's what setting these two headers provide. Uh, the first header is setting a content type of application octet stream. And the second header is setting a content disposition of inline, and it's using a replace filter to actually insert the file name into that header as well. 
And then finally, once we've set those headers and we have that base64 decoded file stored in our variable, we can then check to see if multiple downloads are allowed for this file. If they are, then we're totally fine. If multiple downloads are not allowed, then we need to delete this record from the table. We want to get it out of there as soon as possible. Our response that is being returned is that base64 decoded file. And it sounds a little weird, but because we're setting these headers, that means we actually just get the file back. So let's actually take a look at this in action. So taking a look in Bubble, we can see we have our file that we just uploaded, and we can click this button and download the file. So let's go ahead and click that. And we can see that we now have that file that we just downloaded ready to go. And if we go back over to Xano, we can go to our database. And we can see that because multiple downloads were allowed for this, this record still exists and we can download it again. But let's actually uncheck this value and we will refresh our page in Bubble. And we can see now we're informed that multiple downloads are not allowed. So when we click download, we are given that file one more time, but we can go back to our Xano database and we can see that that record is now completely gone. So what this enables you to do is upload those files in Base64 encoded format, which means that you don't have that permanent link that you get when you use the original file uploader in Xano, and you are in full control of how long these files exist in your database, who they can be accessed by, and when they can be accessed. Now we will take a look very briefly at a couple more of these endpoints. Uh, so we do have this endpoint that lists the files. It's pretty simple. Uh, all we're doing is we're querying the records from the files table that have the authorized user's ID in that allow access field. And we then need to loop through those records to do things like uh, translate the timestamp back to a readable format uh, and uh, just a couple of things to make the front end work. But this is a very simple application, uh, just querying the records from that files table and making sure that that uh, authenticated user's ID is in that allow access field is really the most important thing here. We then have a list uploads API, which is very similar, but what this does is this lists the files that a user has uploaded themselves. Uh, the goal there is to allow calling this next API, which is to delete files. That's all this does. And uh, the original intention here was to give users a way to delete files they have uploaded. So all this does is take in the ID of that file and then deletes the record from the files table. Now, while we're on the topic of deleting these files, uh, we do also have this when to expire field here. So what would we use that for? Well, we would use that to automatically manage these files actually being removed when they should be from our database. And we would do that by using this function called delete expired files. This function will query all of the records from the files table and it will find the files that are expired. It will loop through them and delete them. It's very simple. Right now, this is in a custom function, which means you could have this happen in one of your API endpoints if you'd like. Uh, but the typical place that you would use this would be in a background task. Uh, so just inserting that custom function and setting your background task to run at whatever cadence you feel like would be appropriate here. So now that you've seen how this works, all we're doing is really using base64 encoding to store those files in our database a different way, which gives us more control over how and when these files can be accessed. We do need to talk for just a moment about whether or not this is a, even a good option. We do have plans to offer native secure file storage in the future in Xano, but for now, this can be a great solution for you to be able to store those files in Xano. Where this potentially becomes problematic is from a scalability perspective. It is going to be really important to think about how your application behaves when you get to uh, 100 files or 500 files or 1,000 files, because if you are querying that database, those base64 encoded files can get pretty big. For this example, I really just used a very basic image, but if you're uploading a large PDF or something of that nature, this does have the potential to become problematic. This solution is really for those of you who don't need massive file storage requirements. Maybe you only have a small handful of files that you will ever keep in your database at one time. 
Maybe those files will expire super quickly, so they'll always be deleted on a regular basis. These are all things that can help to make this a worthwhile solution for you. What I recommend is that if this is something that you need right now and you don't want to utilize a third-party service to have those secure files, give this option a shot and test it with maybe the worst case scenario for how many files you may have in your database. Please head down to the comments below and let me know if this helps. Uh, I would really love to hear from anybody that's using this example. I want to give a shout out to Ray Deck over at statechange.ai for actually providing the initial idea to me. Thanks again for watching. Again, any questions or comments, please just leave them down below. You can also reach out to us via the Xano community or through support chat inside of Xano. We'll see you in the next one.